In this lecture, we will create a combination chart, which is also sometimes referred to as a combo chart. The data set that we have is fairly simple. We have the sales amount for five subcategory, as well as the profit percentage. Let's select the data, go to insert charts. And what we want to do is not to select a normal column or a bar chart, but to select the very last option, which is the combo chart. Now the difference between a regular chart and a combo chart is that here I can have different series presented as different visuals. For example, our sales value is a clustered column, which is on my primary axis, which is this one. But I want profit to be a different type of a visual, which is a line chart on my secondary axis. So if you notice here, this is our secondary y-axis and this is our primary y-axis. Once we have done this, our result looks like this. So our primary y-axis has the blue bars that represent the sales amount and the orange trend line that you see is the percentage of profit for all of these subcategories. This was a simple example of creating a combo chart. Now, sometimes what you might want to do is to uh, create a combo chart with a number and another number. Like in this case, we had a number and a percentage, but it is possible that we can do this. Let's say this is sales for quarter one, and this is sales for quarter two. Again, I'm entering some numbers between 100 and 500. Okay, let's see. So I can select both of them, create a chart, go to change chart type, select a combo. And now you notice we can control Q1 and Q2 separately. So the first one is a clustered column, which is great. And the second one I want to be maybe a line chart, which comes like this. And this has to be on our secondary axis. Now you might be wondering why would we want to do this? There are a number of reasons for this. The first thing I want to do is to make sure that both the primary and the secondary axis have the same limit. So we want to make sure that our secondary axis is also from zero to 500. So double click and change the maximum to 500. Excellent. Now the reason we might want to do this is because we want to present the data in a different manner. Maybe we want to compare Q2 against Q1. And this allows us to see that there has been a decline from accessories to appliances, then an increase and then a decline and then an increase. So even though this is not a time period data, if I'm comparing all my five subcategories against each other, as an example, if we sort the data, And we say that the data should be filtered as per quarter one. We can see here that quarter one is the blue column, which is telling us the number one, number two, number three, and so on and so forth, all the different subcategories. And the orange trend line is not actually acting as a trend line here, it's just a comparison line, which tells us the quarter two value. Now remember, there is no reason for us not to do this with a multi-column chart. For example, if we again go to chart design and change the chart type, we could have kept a column chart as well, in which case it would have looked like this. But for comparison, sometimes you might want to choose something like this. There is one additional thing that we can do. I can make the sales quarter to value also as a column, but I want to keep it on the secondary axis which means that I can see both of these, but the quarter one value is as a layer behind the quarter two value. Again, why would we want to do this? We might want to do this if we want to compare two quarters against each other. So if I double click, we can now reduce the gap width or rather increase the gap width. And as you can see, we have a comparison of quarter one and quarter two. We are trying to create what we call a bullet chart. I will do this in more detail in the next lecture. 
but this was just a quick example to show you how a combination chart can be used to make a regular old boring chart much more dynamic.